Good day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of the internet. Welcome to another episode of the Not Just Design podcast. And yeah, by the way, happy new year. So this is a new year, and it's good to have you all sitting down with me and listening to me on this episode, which I recorded last year. It's just too good not to post. Um, I spoke with Hannah. So Hannah is a designer that has gone on to complete her master's in design in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So it was fun to talk to Hannah and get to learn what kind of skills do they teach them as you study, you know, um, masters in design. What do you learn differently? How do you use the tools and what kind of tools? Funny how she mentioned something about creating Snapchat filter. That was the first time I was hearing it. That you could let it design and create your own Snapchat Snapchat filter. I thought those things came, you know, full of come like they come with Snapchat himself. But it was nice to hear all this from Hannah. And I hope as you listen, may you be blessed. <clears throat> yeah, so thank you very much for seeing me, Hannah. I really appreciate it. Um, this is the Not Just Design pod. So I just want to have a conversation, as I said earlier, about interesting things like you going to study MSc in design. I think I've heard people say it. I've never seen anybody except you do it. So it's, it's interesting to learn from your experience um, to say first of all is you know why did you decide i would pursue an msc like people want to do msc in not not design so why would you pursue an msc in design man i think that like there are like a lot of thought process that went into like coming to that like particular decision first things first is i would say like i'm a self-taught designer right um, so most of like my learning experience or everything that I've learned, I learned by myself. I learned on YouTube, you know, I learned from maybe talking to people or reading books or, you know, just experimenting myself and whatnot. So I just always create like that formal education of like design, like going to an actual school. Like, it's what, so what I would say is, you know how like you have like the street knowledge or something, right? And yeah. then you just want to have like the, you know, the formal, formal background yeah. and whatnot. So that was like my, my, my thinking towards like going, going for a, a design degree. I was going through your past work. Um, there's been like a huge change between your work from 2019 and 2023 work. Um, what do you think is specifically responsible for that degree of change um, that you have experienced over that period of time? Uh, personally, in terms of like the kind of design that I was doing then, it doesn't mean that I wasn't doing the design that I'm doing now. It's just that I wasn't uploading those designs. So I'm sure I, like, if, mm. if I'm correct, what you're referring to is like my art style, right? My my Photoshop mm-hmm. skills, my photo manipulation skills, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I want to be sure that we're on the same page before I give like further. Yes, advice, yes, 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 know? yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's part of what I'm referring to. So basically like my, my kind of art that I was putting out. So yeah, so it doesn't mean that, you know, while I was still putting out this kind of art style, I was actually working in an ad agency. Um, then I moved to like working with an NGO. So I was doing like some corporate communications. I also like I did some advertising, like designs and stuff. But I just wasn't really putting them out there, right? Um, yeah. Just because I I just wanted to put out art. <laughs> I didn't really want to put out design per se. You get so. Um, but if it, I don't think that that would be an adequate like form or an adequate way to like judge like you know my design growth or my design trajectory you how, get because those were not the I would I, I I do have like a portfolio out there, you know. If if you are if you are going through yeah. I don't know so I, like that's the thing, I don't know the extent to which like you went to the background check. So if you actually like <laughs> went through like my portfolio, you understand like there is like actual designs that I was doing in twenty nineteen and not like not just art and stuff. But yeah, I would, I would still say regardless, 2019 to 2023 is uh, quite some time. And I would say like I have grown, um, especially in terms of like my design thinking process and, you know, yeah. how I tackle like designs now. And, you know, I think also like I'm more, I'm, I'm less, should I use the word less afraid now to, to, to be more experimental, to be more expressive. Yeah. So just go for it. What, what do you think was responsible so think, for you being afraid of being more experimental 
or like something that's restricting you for going for it? Because I would still, at that time, I would, I would have still considered myself sort of like a new designer, you know? And um, if, you know, I, I think okay. at that time, you are still very critical and very, you know, more judgmental of your work. But now as you, as you, as you talk to other designers, as you, you know, experiment more, as you try out new things, um, you just realize that, man, who, nobody gives it like nobody like you shouldn't really give a fuck about like what people like think about because i think the fear yeah. was also like what people think about the kind of design i'm putting out and you know but like as you just immerse yourself more in, into the design space you realize that you know everybody is you know, everybody has good days bad days good designs or what we you know what you call good design or what you call it bad design or you know like it's not all the time that your designs will be but uh, so far you're like meeting the needs of whoever you're designing for you know and that, mm-hmm. that's what is most important mm-hmm. so when when you start to like have that experience and you know you stop you cut yourself some slack you understand and then you you are more confident to put out your work mm-hmm. and you know so, yeah. so i don't know if, if i answered it okay i'm not looking for an accurate answer i think that answer makes sense for you and i think that's that's the most interesting part because the i think you can tie what you just said to people having the statement of imposter syndrome and everybody say, okay, maybe because you feel like an imposter in the beginning, ends why you would want to post more, you want to post less. That time at 2019 and now, when have you, if you have, experienced the term imposter syndrome the most? When did I experience imposter? The thing is that I don't really think that imposter syndrome just automatically just fizzles out, you know, like every now and then. Yeah. But I think it's, it's still like, I, I still experience it till now. You understand? So, but like, I think now I'm just more of a, I don't want to use the word dear devil, but I'm just more like, yeah. what's the worst that will happen? You know, I think at the end of the day, you're still putting out your work out there and, you know, it's going to meet, if it's going to meet the right people, it's going to meet the right people. If you put out stuff and people bash it, oh, well, I'm good. You know, like, I think now I've sort of developed like a tough skin. <laughs> So if somebody <laughs> says my work is shit, mm-hmm. if somebody says my work is good, okay. mm-hmm. you understand? Like, but I think also like it's just still putting work out there. In, also, I also think of it as some form of archive, you know, like um, you know, uh-huh. just to sort of document like my process. Also, not always about like what people think about it, you know, just more for myself. You understand? To be able to sort of track my growth and my process. So I still get imposter syndrome, but now, unlike before, if I had imposter syndrome, then I probably may not post. But now, if I have imposter syndrome, I will still post. Yeah. <laughs> so I think drum, that's anyhow, not the one stop. Anyhow, you understand. So I think that's the difference now. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, I think time has given you much more confidence. Whether it's bad or good, it's just. Is putting my work out there and expecting feedback process multiple times. What is your process like? Um, I'm looking about like the process of you finding inspiration. I'm like, how are you thinking about these designs? Man, I don't think that there's like one way you understand to always think okay. about give design. Me, give me as much as you um, can. So I'm just going to use, so I, I want to give like one particular, maybe use like a work that I did, right? Mm-hmm. Um, use that, mm-hmm. you know, how I thought about um, to give you an instance. Um, so I don't know if you've seen like the Lagfest um, design that I did, uh, which was like a fictional yeah, so event. Yeah, so the thought process was, so I'm very big on music, I'm very big on events um, in the entertainment space and all of that. And I thought, hmm, you know, what would it look like? Or if I was to come up with like, you know, a brand or, you know, create like a visual representation of an event taking place in Lagos, you know, how would it look like? You know, how, you know, how would I want it to be? And usually for me, yeah. whenever I do something, I, without me explaining it, I want people to feel it. I want people to connect with it emotionally. I want you to look at what I do. Yeah. And already know what I was thinking. And I think for me, that is like, me personally, I think that that is like my, that would be like my greatest, like, should I say achievement or goal whenever I'm creating something is that someone who was not there when I was making this thing 
can actually know what I was thinking about, so, you know, can actually feel it and can actually connect with it if it's through the elements, if it's through the colors, you know, without me opening my mouth. So yes, yeah, so whatever I'm doing, I want people to feel that. And so that was what that's what I usually think about when I'm making something. So going back to the lag first, you know, I also just had to do like some research on like Okay, Lagos. Obviously, I grew up in Lagos, so like it wasn't like too hard to sort of like okay. say, okay, Lagos is a coastal state, or oh, Lagos is chaotic, is energetic. You know, um, these are Lagos yeah. colors. You know, because if you if, if you have come from there, Lagos has like its emblem colors and whatnot. You know, and so like yeah. you know, there's the beach, it's sunny, the buses, the culture. The ruggedness, the jaggedness, the disorientation, <laughs> you know, and how, how how can I also like it's also like people, it's like community, you know, and how how can I put all of all of these things that I'm thinking about into my design? And so I just try my best to sort of visually articulate, you know, what I'm trying to do, either through illustrations or through the colors or through the typography, you know, and just try and like sort of make every everything sync. You know, and just like create like a flow of like everything that I'm trying to do. Yeah. To, you know, that was that was that was it for me. But that's usually, you know, how okay. how how I tackle it. So the funny thing is I think a lot of designers usually start with like maybe the type or the logo. I usually actually start with the elements <laughs> with like the illustrations. <laughs> like for me, those are like the strongest like yeah. visual language to me. You know, and then there's like the logo. The logo is like 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 a trademark and stuff, which also has to be on point. But yeah. my own process is, uh, I like to just start with the elements, with like the the craziness, and you know, stuff. So that's that's how I that's yeah. how I approach. That's how I think about. That's interesting. I'm hearing most of what you've said. I'm hearing just communication, communication, communication. In terms of you want people to feel how you are thinking about it. You want them to understand that expression of, okay, this is how I'm having it in my head. It's more like communicating to them. This is how it feels. Like, this is how we should feel when you see this. And that's nice. Yeah, because and, the thing is, and it's also, it's also about me also, like, you know, if I was working with a client and, I, and you know, the client tells me what they want people to see and what they want people to feel, you know, it's my job as a designer to be able to help them articulate what they are trying to say through design, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, yeah. I feel like if I can't do that adequately, then, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not doing it right and stuff. So, you know, it's not really about me. <laughs> but yeah, it's about the feeling, the emotion. It's interesting, you know. So my next question is, what kind of music do you like? I know this is out of, you know, design related, but what kind of music do you like? What kind of music do I like? I like not one type of music. I like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, what's the, what's the word now? I, I don't, I don't judge. Like I listen to every kind, yeah. I listen to any kind of music. So far, like I connect with it. So far, like it's, yeah. you know, it's talking to me. Then if you give, if uh-huh. I listen to a few Fuji song that is making sense, I'll buy it. <laughs> 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 If I listen to jazz, if I listen to, you know, high life, there's no like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, because I, I do have like some form of music background also before I became a designer, you know, like, so I'm not, uh, I think I also sort of have like, I've, I've been able to train my ear to, you know, know <laughs> good music, you know, by my standard yeah, anyway. Shit. Okay. Yeah. So, so how does good, yeah. how does good music sound like? If you had to describe it, how would you describe good I, music? So that thing, like it, it, the technicality of music, is because I've, I've been in the studio a lot, and so um, I've heard music like in its rawest form. I've heard music when it's mixed and mastered, and so I think like there are just certain things that you look out, you listen to, like especially when the song is mixed or when the song is mastered. So it's like the let's not go into the technicality of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to talk about design. I guess we bring out my past life. <laughs> it's but, fun yeah. now. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to be honest. Like I think every designer that I have met, at least the ones closest to me, they always not have a specific genre that they are interested in. I mean, general, I don't know how to pronounce that they're interested in. Yeah. You always have them mix. One thing I listen to Afro, they listen to Rema kind of music. 
Then the next, everybody's vibing to Ashake or they start playing Chris Brown. Like, there's just this mixing of different sounds. And, and I'm like, why are all of us just like this? Like, if you talk to the designer, what kind of music? Like, I don't, I don't really know. I like K pop, but I can listen to Ashake. I'm like, how would you mix K pop and Ashake together in your head? So it's, it's just interesting to see that you're also on that page too. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm very much on that yeah. page. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. So before you went to Amsterdam, why did you decide Amsterdam was the like place to go to to study? Was it the university decision or the location decision? Um, I think it was both. Um, so I have a friend I was talking to and he, he told me that I was telling him my plans on like, oh, wanting to go to school and stuff. And because he's also a designer, I was like, oh, he has a friend in Netherlands who is studying design. And before then, I'd even mm-hmm. already like been thinking of coming to the Netherlands, you know, to school. Because okay. in terms of like where they are, like digitally and stuff and the kind of like digital designs that they do, you know, um, it's it's pretty... It's pretty top, like top notch stuff, you know. And so, yeah. Um, but at that time, when I was talking to my friend, I had, um, I didn't know the particular university that I wanted to go to, but I knew that I already wanted to come here. So, but he told me that we had a friend who's also a designer who was studying design that he would connect me up, you know, with the person and stuff. And so I started talking to this guy. Mm-hmm. I was asking him questions about the course he was doing and, you know, how he was being taught because even at that time when I was talking to him, he was rounding up. So he was just giving me like okay. insights and stuff. So, and then I started researching on the school because another thing here is you also want to come to a school that you are being taught in English because here they speak Dutch. So like a few schools okay. teach in English. So you also have to make sure that where you're coming to, the, you are being taught in English. So yeah. So here was, you know, the school I went to was one of the schools I was being you know, I was going to be taught in English. Also, like the design course was, like I said, you know, it's sort of um, focusing on like your design process and you being able to like reflect on every design choice that you've made and why you made them mm-hmm. and how they impact and also like the ethics of everything that you're designing and how, you know, how it's going to impact the people that are using it. You know, are you designing for kids? You know, or, what are you thinking about when you're designing for yeah. kids? And so like those small intricate things that we sort of tend to overlook, you know, a lot as designers, yeah. you know, those were the things that they were that's like really big and major for them. And, you know, that really caught my interest. So, um, yeah, so I, I ended up, you know, and also because it's sort of like a broad course, right? Is um, because my dream has always mm-hmm. been to be like a multidisciplinary designer. You know, I just don't want to be one type of designer. You know? And in the long yeah. run, I want to be, you know, I want to be a designer that you know, I design for a lot of things and design for a lot of people. And you know, this course, I you know was 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 it for me. So you know, that's why yeah. I came here. That's why I so came to the school. You mentioned about being multidisciplinary. Do you like cars? Do I like cars? Do you want to design for like cars? cars? No, no. Uh, that, I'm saying no <laughs> because I haven't thought about it. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm saying okay, no. Okay, okay. Like, what, uh, one of the things I really want to get into is like proper, is like 3D design and immersive okay. design, you know, like, because I, I did on my, on my project in school, I worked on like some um, immersive, um, interactive design um, okay. things. So, those are the things that, that I that I want to do. like stuff where like you walk into a room and your presence in the room affects like you know your body and the entire space is sort of like has a synergy mm-hmm. and stuff. So those are the things that like mm-hmm. you know for the future that I would like to sort of develop like my skills on you know as a as a designer. So that's what I'm okay. mostly interested in. That's as from brand design. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I like the futuristic aspect of it which is um, the immersive aspect. Since you had a project on it, um, if it's possible, you can share like your experience around designing for an, or your, yeah, just your, your learnings about designing for an immersive experience. The way people think okay, about it now again. and the way you think about it, Apple Vision Pro, I'll just give context a bit. When Apple Vision Pro came out, a lot of people went to Figma, did the glass morphism stuff 
and then was everywhere. Now, I think that's how the most most of the public has in terms of the design designers how they think about it. I don't think that's it. However, I want to hear your thoughts on your learnings on immersive design. Probably, yeah, just if you can share on that, I'll, I'll be really excited. Okay. So from like, just like the, the personal project that I worked on, um, I mm-hmm. used a tool. First of all, I'll start with the tool that I used. I use a tool called Touch Designer. Um, so Touch Designer is a tool that helps you like, it's a no-code tool. And so like, it helps you like create like okay. um, whatever you want to make whatever you want the, the person the, or the people to interact with, it sort of helps you like also model like 3D elements and just things in, in, in the tool, yeah. right? For me, my project, my personal project was trying to capture the chaos of Lagos um, because I'm very passionate yeah. about where I'm from. <laughs> and so I was trying to sort of, capture the chaos or I could share um, some YouTube links to the, the project that I did after um, the podcast. Okay. So um, I really appreciate that. Yeah. So the point was to sort of also, should I say something like organized chaos? I think that that's what I called it. So I think I called it organized chaos. Um, mm-hmm. Where you have like all these like circles moving in random motions, right? Also, like, even, like, the colors and all of that, you know, sort of, when you see it, you know that, okay, like, what I was, what I was trying to say. Um, so, yeah, you have, like, these circles, like, moving around, right? And then I use, like, this um, leap motion sensor. So, leap motion sensor is, like, um, it's, it had, is a hardware tool, like, where you connect it to the touch designer and then it picks up like mm. your hand gestures. And so if you hover above it, you can control yeah. what is being displayed. You get, so I was able to connect yeah. the leap motion sensor to the touch designer. I was able to like program like ha- different, the hand gestures that I wanted it to read. So you can pinch, you can grab, you know, you can do all of that. And then you can like, so if you grab, if you swipe, you see like these circles, um, you, you find yourself controlling these circles that are moving in random motions and stuff. And so yeah. that's what I say, like when I want you to be able to walk into a room and you and the objects being displayed sort of have like a synergy or like, you know, like a connection where mm. you are the one in charge, you are the one controlling. And I feel yeah. like that's how you can get people to connect with like, that's another way you can get people to connect with like, what you're trying to pass across or the message you're trying to tell, or, you know, by getting them yeah. involved and immersed in, you know, what you're trying to do. And so that's just like the basic or like the summary of you know, what, the, what my project is. That's yeah. interesting. This is my own feature. I mean, the, my own imagination of immersive technology is we live in a life outside Vision Pro, outside the headsets that we usually wear. I don't mean maybe a Google um, contact lens or a Google Glass. I mean having devices that are in places so if you walk into your room for example you could just like you mount a wi-fi in your house you can just mount a, an immersive device in different corners of your house so you don't have to carry anything secondly you just enter your house and because you have those devices mounted you can experience the things in your house and just touch and move around and like just control everything without having to wear glasses on your face that's how i imagine it though it's just very strange so that's like- I don't know how that would I don't know that how that Because you know there are smart houses I didn't hear, I didn't hear now. Sorry. You, I'm saying like there are, there's are, there are smart houses now. I feel like what you're describing is like describing like a yeah. smart house where you walk into your house yeah. and you snap or you use your voice prompt or your hand prompt or Yeah. That, that's that's what that's what yeah, I, what like I feel. You know, like you no know, chrome chromecast is like having a chromecast yeah. that turns your and yeah. your normal TV to a smart TV. Yeah, something like that that turns your like normal normal house. It's an immersive experience for like digital stuff. That would be dope. That would be a feature I want to live in. Anyway, uh, my next question is for you. Um, what was the process of getting into the Amsterdam University? How long did it take you to process? The, I'm, the I'm asking this question because living in Nigeria can have some difficulties. I'm like, what was your experience yeah. there? And what was that process for you? Uh, so process first um, before experience. Okay. So process um, before living in Nigeria was... Um, I think 
to be honest, it's actually pretty straight. It's more straightforward than people think it is. Um, Are you serious? Just like, Marvel. yeah, like go to the school. So that's the thing. Like once you start the, well, like once you start the enrollment process, right? The way the school structure is set up is that um, at every point you get an email from the school informing you on the next step to do jig it. So it's like a guided application process, right? I mean, sometimes it can get overwhelming because there's too much of information that you need, right? And you don't really want to miss anything. But in that regard, it can be overwhelming. But they have like a process where, you know, at every point they're sending you emails on the next step to do. So you go to their site, you enroll, you have your documents, your normal documents, your WIAC, your bachelor's, your IELTS, you know, all of that. And then you upload, you have to sort of also wait for feedback and all of that. Um, also, you also have to do like, um, during the application process, you also have to do an interview to get into the school. So the interview is in like, I think two or three stages where you also you actually have to do like a three hours quiz so you have to do like sort of well i would say like an entrance exam right and this the for this particular course they don't they don't take more than 48 people per year so they're like a thousand and something wow. people trying to get in and they only choose like 48 people at the end of the day so you actually have to write like a three hours quiz but the good thing is they sort of like give you an idea of what to expect so you can also prepare, right? And so they yeah. give you like a three hours quiz. You also have like a, a Zoom or Google Meet like interview with some of the instructors in the school where they will also ask you about like your design process, the kind of design that you do, what you're interested in and all of that. And if they are satisfied with your answers, then you get like a congratulatory, you know, email that you've been accepted and then you continue the entire process and stuff. But I think that uh, that, that part was like one of like the most nerve wracking part of the entire process, <laughs> having to write, having to do the exam and having to, you know, do the interview. Three um, hours. So, but yeah, aside from that, you know, there's, there's a lot of writing. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> So in regards to the experience, um, what's the experience like? The, the experience like uh, like after coming here, right? Yeah. My experience was mixed because you're yeah, coming to like a new environment and we yeah, are meeting people because my class is like very, very multicultural, right? So you have people from, you have, obviously you have Dutch people, right? But you also have people from... Iran, we have people from Lithuania, we have people from Italy, Colombia. We have people from like different parts of the world and they also like group they so like each each project that we work on across like the the course of the year, they group you into like groups of four or three, right? You get to like work on projects with people who are not from the same country as you. So you get to see how like people think and how they process information and how they tackle like design problems. And, you know, it's a, like a mm. good learning experience for me. It was, like, was to see like just how grounded people from other countries are in design and how they yeah. attack design and how like learned or, you know. So yeah, it was in that yeah. regard, you know, it was like it, it was a really good like experience because you can you know learn from other people. So we're approaching the end. Um, I have a few questions left. You know, you already had the street knowledge of design. You already you know knew what to do. Your designs at twenty nineteen could sell. Like it's not. It was still it was way better than mine in a long way. So like I'm looking at it. I'm taking inspiration from it. It's, it was it was good, really good. And then you went to study an MSc in it, and you met this multicultural people, your environment, what would you say is something that you say, okay, wait, this is something that is a lot to the Nigerian audience. This is something that most designers and Nigerians do. But on an international level, it's not something that you see because, you know, you've been exposed to that. What would you say are those things? Man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yep, we're just halfway into the conversation. We're almost done. Thank you for listening this far. I want to remind you to 
subscribe to the newsletter the world's podcast newsletter to get interesting juice about other podcast episodes of other different amazing podcasts around the world africa and outside in other words i also want to let you know that this will probably be one of the last interviews uh, more of that at the end of the podcast for yeah so listen and just get back to it thank you man there are quite a number of things but because i noticed that (laughs) and the truth is that it's not even because like nigerian designers are amazing designers let's not even get it twisted (laughs) you know like any nigerian that is doing what they are doing they are doing it well right and and what one thing I noticed is is and also should I say maybe like a culture shock I don't know I feel like designers in Nigeria are able to churn out designs in a very short period of time maybe that's relative me saying short short is relative right but compared <laughs> to or maybe because of also the type of design space jigger because mm, coming yeah. here and like working on projects they sort of the time you know there's some there's some time they give you time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I've yeah. worked in like design agencies where in back home in Lagos, where they give you like a brief and they, they give you a brief today. They wanted it yesterday. You understand? So, <laughs> but, but like here, the, the process is sort of like, you know, they actually really want you to think about it and like they give you time to actually like process. Right. And this is just like, and I'm saying yeah. the experience of how the projects that we tackled when I was in school you get so mm-hmm. they give you like they give you like eight weeks to work on a project but then again the the brief also matters also i need to point that out also i i know that but just in com- sort of like in comparison it's almost like back home in nigeria like you get, you get a brief and you sort of i think in recent times designers are now like pushing back now and like we need more time, you know, you can't rush us and yeah. stuff. I know like back before I came here, back like when I was, you know, also like when I was still like a new designer and how like I was sort of like always rushed to like churn out designs and stuff. But like here yeah. is a bit, you know, there's like a, a little bit of time that they give you. So that's one. Two, another thing that I noticed is again, it also, also at the end of the day, it also has to do with like the type of design also. But like here, they, they do a lot of like mixed form of design. To get. So yeah. say if I was working for like a design agency right now or an advertising agency or something, right? And I was like maybe a creative director, a designer. Um, I wouldn't just be doing like branding stuff most times because here in the Netherlands, I think they, they are really big on digital design. So they actually add like a lot okay. of like AR, VR, like immersive designs and stuff to like whatever, like you know, brand design or communication design that they're trying to do. Like, it's not only just, like, creating brands. Like, it's not only creating, like, brand design and visual communication. There's it's always, like, a, a bigger, you know, like, they always want to add, like, quote-unquote, techy stuff. You get, like, so, like, virtual <laughs> reality, augmented reality. Something futuristic. Yeah. Something futuristic, yeah. So that's, like, that's what they do a lot of that here also which is not really something common at least at the time that i left so i don't know if it's something that they are doing now but like at the time that i left you know it's, it's not so like mm-hmm. there's a difference in the in the type of design so that's that something like you know that i got to you know figure out and also being exposed to like a lot of design tools other than your regular photoshop figma sketch yeah. you know you know, Adobe Swiss, there are a lot of de- uh, design tools out there. So, you know, in my, in my first week of, the, of my master's, like, you know, like I ended up making like a face filter for Snapchat. Yeah, like a filter, like a Snapchat face filter. Are you serious? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so like, so yeah, I've been, you know, introduced to like stuff like Lens Studio. And like, they even, they, so like, that's the thing, like, they walk you through the process, like, they give you a brief. So the first thing you do, you know, interpret the story, you know, like, or interpret the brief, then come up with like your story, you know, the sketch, then the 3D modeling, then going to the, you know, going to Lens Studio. Then connecting it to Snapchat, yeah. you know, like the entire process was just like really amazing. And, you know, I ended up creating like a few thousand in my first week, <laughs> I mean, which was nerve wracking because 
but you know like you end up doing it and you know it you know just shows you like again you know how they approach design here you know it's, it's a bit different yeah so, um, yeah that's that's beautiful that's yeah yeah that, that's that's <laughs> honestly beautiful because like just taking you away from the design tool that you regularly as you mentioned like figma adobe suits into creating filters for snapchat it's i think it more than teaches you how to do that it gives you the exposure of this is how far your design can go it's not just resting on a billboard on your website like it can be interactive on a phone people can use it to snap picture like basically use that to post or something like it just shows how far a design can go aside just a billboard which is most likely common for every designer or say um a poster on, on social media and that's that's a beautiful thing to say that's, that was something that i was um, hoping to be able to do during like the this, this past um, election was to try and do a filter for the party that i was supporting which i'm not going to mention because i'm not a politi- i'm not I don't like talking about politics, but you know, I was, with, I, I was hoping that somebody yeah. would do it. I was actually hoping somebody would do it yeah. um, to create sort of like a Snapchat filter that people could use to promote, yeah. you know, the election and stuff. But nobody ended up doing it, you know. But it was something that I, I really wanted to do. But at that point in time, it was peak period for school stuff because I was also writing like my finals or preparing for my final or yeah. something like that. So, yeah, it wasn't feasible, but I feel like that could have been a good way to, yeah. you know, like other than just like doing like your visual comms on social media, doing posters and stuff. I feel like, yeah. you know, doing stuff like, you know, Snapchat filter and all of that, you know, try to fuse, you know, some form of virtual or augmented reality to, you know, the whole campaign would have pushed, helped or aided in, you know, pushing the agenda forward but right. yeah there, there's so many ways you can do this and when you know when you when you start to experiment with design like that it also helps with your confidence you know like it boosts like it gives you like it's like mm-hmm. a confidence booster so that's why when you ask me i'm like right now even if like i feel some type of way i'm like fuck it what's the worst that happened you know? but, yeah. <laughs> like you i know you've you've seen it you've been there like there's there's nothing bad that can happen at this way it can't get worse you know if you bad pass like this and another yeah, thing that I learned is that, like, here, you know, regardless, I know, like, the people say, like, Nigerians, like, are mediocre and stuff, but, like, to some extent, it might be true, but I don't think that is true in the design space. I think that we have, like, the Nigerian design space is so, the people are so exceptional. And I'm not just saying that because it's a space that I belong to, right, Jigia? The Nigerian design space is so exceptional. I don't believe that, like, mediocre, I mean, obviously now, like, obviously, it's not, oh, you still have, like, but I'm saying that, like, yeah. we have a lot of good designers in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that designers in Nigeria can thrive, like, anywhere outside of Nigeria. I mean, we see it all the time. I was doing something with two hours, but that's my top process. But yeah, let's just keep it at that. <laughs> you find it, you find it back, like, the grace of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I want to ask um, your curriculum for learning at the university. Is that something that university allows you to share with people? And if that's possible, can you send, like, share that? Um, I think maybe people who would want to learn by just following the curriculum mm. would love that. Mm. There's a, is, I don't know if the word is curriculum, but, like, I can say, like, there's a grading system, right? Or there's, like, mm. a way, or, like, there are key things that they look out for, you get, or there are courses, uh-huh. So like there are courses like yeah um courses. like design research, there's design ethics, there's data and matter, there's um I think there's some other things that I've forgotten. But I wouldn't really because the thing is like for the course you are you're going to work on three projects. So there's project S, project M and project L, small, medium and large. So obviously yeah. the small project is like four weeks, the medium is like two weeks, the large is like eight weeks to get. And so you'll be assessed and graded on these projects. Mm-hmm. Obviously, before the, before you start working on the projects, your instructors and your teachers are going to sort of also take you through on, you know, different forms of like research and you know, what they expect you to do during the okay. to get. So I wouldn't say that I have like the curriculum per se, you know, but I can only share like, I think there's like a, it's, there's a system though that I can share with you. Okay, okay. I'll appreciate that. Um, if you can share that with me, that would be nice. 
for people who would want to like experiment or try it out, um, probably learn more in that regard. That will be that will be beautiful. So I don't have any more questions anymore. We're approaching the end. I just have two last questions. And the first one is, if you had to spend a thousand years doing something, um, what would you think that thing, what would that thing be? A thousand years doing something? Is that the question? Now, I need to be sure that I understand the question. A thousand years doing something, a thousand years learning something. Basically impossible, but let's say you have a thousand years to do one thing, right? What would that thing be? Um, it could be like it could be outside your field. It could be in your field. Just that. The most, I, the most I, know, I know it's a hypothetical question, but a thousand years is a long time to be miserable. Yeah. So it has to be. <laughs> ha- I, need, I need to be happy first of all. That like for that one thousand years, I'm going to be mm-hmm. happy. And what are the things that bring me happiness? The things that bring me happiness is creating in you know, whatever capacity do you understand design art anything using my hands to make something i have to be creating i have to also so the 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 core of this thing is happiness right and so the happiness now has like different branches right the brand one Mm -hmm. of the branches creating making art designing the other branch of the happiness is being with my family because my family is like a big part of my life my siblings are very important mm-hmm. to me, my friends. So, you know, and we, I need to be happy. They need to be happy. We all need to be happy together, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, yeah. and for me, those, those are the most important things. Okay, nice. That's you awesome. spend a thousand years creating things. Making yeah. random shit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, making random shit. <laughs> Just anything that you can put together and make sure something works. <laughs> yes, yes. And making random okay. shit. My That's, family, they have, to, they have to be alive with me that 1,000 years old. <laughs> <laughs> can, yeah. I, can I just be? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have to walk away of making them stay alive that 1,000 years. <laughs> no, the, this question now, they have to not just be me alone now. In 1,000 years, it's me and my family. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay Wait. okay um that's that's basically all the questions i have right now um last one is if you have to have somebody sit down on this podcast and have this conversation who would that person be it could be outside design could be in design Wait. your close circle hmm. who would it be nigeria just nigeria <laughs> <laughs> oh i swear <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god my country, my country. <laughs> yeah. not, if I was to have somebody that, that would have this conversation, hmm. it would be my mom. Your mom. So you would want to have your mom on this podcast and have this kind of conversation. Yeah, with my her. mom is late. My mom is late. And so, okay. you know, she, she, she died when I was pretty young, when, when I was a teenager. And okay. so she hasn't seen me grow and find like my purpose you know she she hasn't experienced me as a designer and she hasn't seen all the things that i've been able to you know the small things that i've been able to accomplish as a designer you know she would have also liked to like do a master's in something that i was passionate in and now that i've done it you know she's not here to see it so if there's anybody that i would you know like to talk about everything that i'm interested in and that i love it would be my mother okay that's nice. That's that's beautiful. Um, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have any question anymore. I think this comes to the end of the pod. Thank you very much for sitting with me. Um, I this is something that I'm trying out. Um, however, but before before I mention that, if you have anything that you'd want to say, like a closing remark or a statement, how people can find you on social media, any of that. Mm, how can people find me on social media? You can find me on social media. I'm not really active on instagram per se but i'm active on twitter so hannah underscore yeah. d10 is my, is my twitter um my linkedin is hannah Jorjae, so that's my last name um there that's those are the two important places where you can find me uh what else i don't know just keep, keep just create Keep creating. <laughs> Keep making random shit. Crazy. Random <laughs> shit. Yeah. That, that's always that's my cool. that's always my 
my my go to like just keep making random shit, keep making stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, like mm-hmm. I feel like the 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 idea of perfection is a myth and is an illusion, and there's nothing perfect. And so, um, you can try to make your work as good as you your 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 knowledge can. You know. But like can't take you to but like don't don't stress. Don't sweat. Just mm-hmm. create random shit and put it out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, that's that's beautiful. Just create random shit, man. Create random Make shit. Random shit. <laughs> so okay, that, that's cool. That's cool. Thank you very much, Hannah. I really appreciate it sitting down with me. I would um be expecting the documentary that you send. That's like the YouTube videos that I say you send. Yeah. And then the uh, the grading system that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. So thank you very much. This was this was insightful. This was nice. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed. It. I hope you had a good time. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sitting out this far. Yeah. So this conversation was nice. Um, it was really nice. I was glad I got to speak to Hannah because it was a very, very insightful and fun conversation. I'm editing this, I'm rounding this up in 2024 and looking back, I was like, yeah, this was, this was worth the time. So yeah, about this being the last episode of the last interview session, I'm moving forward with the podcast to do more one-on-one. Would I say, would I say it's a more slow episode where I would be explaining shit, you know, and just teaching and not teaching by say but just telling stories about interesting stuff that i find online or that i've come across you'll still be around the premise of design tech and still be all around storytelling and i pray it's going to be fun and interesting to all of you that are listening but it's going to be more of me you hearing my voice and all of that it will be less of interviews and still have friends where I want to have in the pod. Like I want to still have Clement on the pod. I still want to have Deja Vu. I still want to have so many other fun people on the podcast and just hear from them. Uh, other new podcasters I meet with the tech and like science space. I still want to just have a fun moment with them like Musa, Shiko. I want to have KK on the podcast because one of our friends. One time I just get to know what's inside that guy's head. Because this is just it's amazing. Anyway. Um, as you listen and as you subscribe, I hope you do a follow on this journey. May you be blessed. To be honest, I think you would find it insightful. Whenever I say may you be blessed, it's just me just having a thing to say at the end of every podcast or in the beginning. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I would give you more information. But in the meantime, kindly subscribe to what's podcasting newsletter in the description. And yep, yeah, see you in the next episode. Happy New Year. Bye.